Hi, I'm Ian Chan from Stanford Research Systems. And today I'm going to talk about the high-speed data capture options for the SR860 series of lock-in amplifiers. The SR860 is capable of acquiring data at more than a mega sample per second. And I'm going to tell you how to get that data from the lock-in amplifier onto your computer. There are three ways to do this. The first is to use the traditional analog outputs and digitize the output with ADCs on the remote computer. The next way is to skip the analog step and capture data digitally with the built-in data capture buffer. And the final way is to use Ethernet streaming, where digital data is sent continuously from the lock-in. There are four analog outputs. The two rear panel BNCs output X and Y. The two front panel BNCs output X or R and Y or theta. The analog output scaling depends on the sensitivity. If the sensitivity is at one millivolt, then a reading of one millivolt will give a full scale output of 10 volts. Additionally, there is a per channel offset and expand. The user can elect to subtract an offset from the analog outputs, which also affects the reading that the lock-in reports. The user can also expand the analog outputs by a factor of 10 or 100 times. This is usually used for the Y channel, so you can use more of the analog output range. For our first demo, we have a, an S-SIG gen uh, generating 1 MHz uh, signal going into the input of the lock-in amplifier. It's being uh, amplitude modulated at 100 kHz. So we take the analog output and put it into the uh, scope. And you can see uh, that's the signal coming out of the analog outputs. So when we change sensitivity, it will affect the output scale. So go that way, the output becomes smaller. And we, if we go the other direction, the output is actually clipping because it's hitting the 10 volt maximum. So let's go back to the original setting. We can output R instead of X, and that's R, uh, but R looks almost identical to X because uh, we have done the auto phase. So let's go back to X, and we can also engage offset. So that's clicking this button, and you can see by turning the knob, I can adjust the analog output as well as the uh, reading of the lock-in amplifier. To disengage, we press that again and there's no offset anymore. We can also look at Y readings. That's Y and it's uh, using a very small amount of the analog output range. We can expand it 10 times by pressing that button, so it uses more output range, and we can expand it a hundred times uh, to use even more. And that is analog outputs for you. The next option is to use the capture buffer. There's a capture buffer built into the lock-in that can store up to a million samples of floating point data. This data is then transferred to the remote computer once the data capture is done. Any remote interface can be used, including serial, GPIB, USB, and VXI11. There are three modes of capture. The first is to trigger the start. Capture then ends when the buffer is full. The second is to capture continuously and then end the capture on a trigger. And the final mode is to capture one sample per trigger. Note that a trigger is defined as a falling edge on the trigger input. 
Here are some of the commands used to set up a capture. You can define the capture length, the rate of capture, and what you want to capture. The most important command is the capture start command. The A parameter tells the lock-in if you want to end capture when the buffer is full, or if you want to capture continuously with new data overriding old data. The B parameter tells the lock-in if you want to start immediately, wait for an external trigger to start or stop capture, or perform one sample per trigger capture. If you say capture start 00, zero that means capture starts immediately and capture ends when the buffer is full. Capture start 01 means that the lock-in will wait for an external trigger to start capture and capture ends when the buffer is full. Capture start 11 means that capture starts immediately. When the buffer is full, new data overwrites old data. Capture stops when an external trigger is received. And the final example is capture start 02. It will start capturing one sample per trigger until the tr buffer is full. Note that in one sample per trigger mode, you should not trigger faster than the native data rate. If you do so, you may get fewer samples than you expect. Here are more capture commands. Capture stop stops capture immediately. Capture bytes returns the number of bytes captured so far. And capture val returns the captured data in text form. Finally, capture get returns bulk data in binary format. So for our second demonstration, we have the uh, SR865 connected to a remote computer, which is actually below the table, but the monitor is up on top, uh, using USB cable. And we're going to demonstrate data capture. So I'm going to use a Visa Interactive Control to connect the remote computer to the lock-in amplifier. I'll do that using USB. And now we're connected. I can query the lock-in amplifier. And it tells me it's an SRS SR865A. So I can set up a data capture. Let's say capture length 256 kilobytes. I can tell it to capture at the full native data rate, capture rate zero. I can uh, query what the n n uh, maximum data rate is. It's capture rate max. Uh, it's telling me it's one and a quarter mega samples per second. And I can ask it to capture, oh, say, all x, y, r of theta. That's capture config 3. So now I can tell to start, capture, start, and I'm going to do uh, immediate capture and end when the buffer is full. So write that, and you can query the capture status with capture stat, and a result of 6 means that it's done. It got a trigger and it's done. So if you ask capture val 0, that is the oldest value uh, it had, or the first value. So you query and you get x, y, r, and theta values, all in floating point. So you ask capture val 1, query, this is the second oldest point, and capture val to the third oldest point, and that's what you get. So the final command I want to show you is uh, capture get, which gets uh, binary data 
from the lock-in. So you tell it what offset, so 0 kilobytes offset, comma 2, so get 2 kilobytes starting at 0 offset. So query, and that's your binary data there. Um, to get the next 2 kilobytes of data, you get capture get 2 comma 2, so 2 kilobytes starting at offset 2 kilobytes query and so now you've got the next block of 2 kilobytes of binary data and then capture get 4 comma 2 and so on and so forth the largest amount of data you can get at one time is 32 kilobytes of data and the final option for high speed data capture is ethernet streaming Data is streamed continuously from the lock-in to a remote computer over Ethernet in 32-bit float or 16-bit integer format. And the data rate can be as high as 20 megabytes per second. There are three things you have to do to stream data. First, you have to set up streaming over a remote interface. This tells the lock-in what data you want how fast you want it, and in what format. Then you send the stream on command over VXI11 from the computer that, you, that will receive the data. And then the receiving computer has to capture the data that is sent. Here are some of the streaming commands used to configure what you want to stream, how fast you want it streamed, and in what format. The stream port command tells the lock-in which port on the receiving computer to send the data to. By default, it uses port 1865. For example, if you are streaming data from two different lock-in amplifiers to the same computer, each lock-in must send data to a different port so that you can distinguish the two streams. Stream on, as mentioned before, must be sent over VXI11 to the receiving computer. This is because the lock-in automatically gets the IP address of the receiving computer from this command. Stream off turns off streaming. If you don't stop streaming, the lock-in will keep on streaming and use up your network bandwidth. Finally, the receiving computer needs to capture the streamed data. You need to write software that listens for data on UDP port 1865 by default. The receiving computer also needs to allow UDP data on the specified port through its firewall. The format of the UDP packet consists of 4 bytes of header followed by 1024 bytes of binary data. SRS has example code written in C and C++ and Python that you can look at. So our final demo will be of Ethernet streaming. Uh, here I have the Visa interactive control again. But this time uh, I'm going to connect over VXI11. So the uh, Remote computer and the uh, lock and amplifier are connected through a router. And I'm connected to the uh, lock and amplifier. I can query the identification and it tells me it's a SR865A. So I can set up streaming. Uh, I can Say I, let's say I want uh, to read R and theta, so that's stream channel 2, and I want full native data rate, so stream rate 0, and I want floating point format, so that's stream format 0. 
So now I have, have it set up the way I want. I can start streaming. So it's important to send the stream on command uh, from using VXI11 from the computer receiving the the uh, data. And once I write that, you notice this uh, program here, which was in the background, uh, is now receiving uh, stream data. So this uh, program captures uh, UDP data on port 1865, which is the default port, and, it, and it's, it's got two traces, uh, orange and yellow. That's R and theta, which is what I asked for. So if you want to change what you get, you have to stop streaming, stream off, and that stopped it. And I can change stream channel 1, which is X and Y, and stream on again. And now I've got X and Y data. So let's zoom. And there we go. It's a little easier to see. I'll scale. So the Y is on the bottom. It's not perfectly, uh, phase is not perfect. And you've got the X there. And if I change it to, say, a, a modulation rate of, say, 50 kilohertz. And there you have uh, a lower rate of modulation. Go back to 100 kilohertz. So there you have data streaming. So those are the three ways you can get high-speed data out of your lock-in. For more information, please visit our website at thinksrs.com. This is Ian Chan signing off for Stanford Research Systems.